Um, this is my bedroom. This is my new setup that I'm kind of testing out. I need to get some sort of backdrop piece here. In the meantime, you can enjoy my nice white wall and the broken mirror. Oh shit, I should do something about that. Anyway, um, so I have to reassemble my wheelchair cushion today and I thought I would do that while talking to you guys about parenting while disabled. So I'm kind of going to give you my five best tips on parenting while disabled and put this cushion together somehow. Why am I putting it together? Because the older kids were bringing things in from my van and it got left outside because they didn't know what it was and yeah. Then I had to dry it out. Oops, stuff's falling off the bed. That's all right. Okay. So tips on parenting while disabled. And when I say disabled, I usually mean chronically ill. Um, I'm not a paraplegic. I don't have mobility issues in that way typically, but I do really struggle with energy levels and pain levels and all that kind of fun stuff. All right. So tip number one is set expectations. Um, when I'm setting rules for my kids around the house, I want to set rules that I can enforce when I'm having a bad day as well as when I'm having a good day because it doesn't do anybody any good if I'm uh, not able to enforce rules and they change day to day. So things like my kids know that when they get up in the morning and it's not a school day that they are okay to turn the TV on and watch it until I come out and give them five minute warning. Now on a day when I'm feeling okay and we're going out somewhere, that five minute warning might be after only an hour and on a day when I'm really feeling like run over crap, it might be more like noon, one o'clock before we get around to turning the TV off. And that's okay because the expectation is still the same. They got up, they watched TV, and I gave them a warning before we turned it off. Um, related is tip number two. Oh, first I should look at this. So, this is my cushion back. And this says bottom of ear. Okay. Tip number two is corral and contain. Um, when my kids were littler, I basically had a living room that they could play in that was like a giant playpen. It was baby-proofed within an inch of its life, even with the for the older kids. I could lay on the couch, I could doze, and I knew that nothing in that room was going to hurt them. I hear my roommates, or possibly the heat. I don't know. Anyway, um, older kids, I use technology. Um, and I use, again, setting boundaries. My kids know they're not allowed to leave. My school-age kids know they're not allowed to leave the yard without asking me. Um, the older kids know that they need to tell me where they're going. Where they're, you know, all kind of normal parenting things, but it gets a little bit more important when they know you can't chase after them. It, it's set up in a way that they understand why I'm doing it. And, yeah. Anyway. All right, step number two of this thing. This is so loud. I love how everything is labeled. All right. I don't like this. This is suck. So, along with using technology to help me track my kids and setting up safe spaces, I always say I need no, really loud zipper, like a secondary space. Um, kind of how when you're new to parenting, people will often talk about you, how you need a second um, diapering station if you have a two-level house. Um, if you're having a like crappy need to stay laying down or sitting down kind of day you need a secondary station where you can do that so i might have one kind of set up in my room but then i'll also set one up in the living room so i can go kind of sit where the kids are even though i'm maybe sitting maybe laying on a couch maybe but i have a drink and i have a remote and i have a phone charge station and I have all of the things I need to stay and parent as effectively as I can in that moment. Uh, all right, let's see. This looks wrong. I have a 
manual to this somewhere. Hmm. I bet that's upside down. I've had, do you know it's Christmas time at all? It's stuck in my head for the entire hour now. Do you know it's Christmas? All right, that looks better. All right, tip number three is everybody needs snacks. If you're having a bad day, you need to make sure your kids have access to food. Um, all of the youngest kids really can be trusted with like a drawer where granola bars live. Um, older kids need to know what they're allowed to eat and what they're not allowed to eat because it's really upsetting to discover one of the kids has eaten all of the colored sugar that's meant to go on top of cakes. Yeah, that was a fun day. Anyway, um, but again, it's not their fault if they don't know. So, you know, you're allowed to eat whatever fruit you want. You can have one of these granola bars. And for the most part, kids will, most kids, in most of the time, because nothing is universal, will stick to what they know as long as they're able to feed themselves. Um, and older kids can be really helpful. They can, same thing, kind of with that morning routine my kids have. Um, they know that when in the morning, whenever the eldest kid gets up, it's their job to make sure that their younger siblings are fed. And I say it like that because I have a shared household. There are kids in my house who are not actually my kids. So there are two eldest siblings and they both know they are responsible for feeding their, their smaller siblings. Um, now that my oldest is 12 and likes to sleep in a little bit more, my uh, middle child has kind of taken over that duty where she can now make her own cereal and she can feed her younger brother. And that makes them happy, it makes me happy, and it kind of gives them that sense of pride. They get to accomplish something in their day. Um, yeah, and that kind of goes with tip number four, which is kids can help. Um, toddlers can do pretty much anything that you can immediately direct them. But the thing about it is you can direct them only with your voice. So you don't actually have to get up and help them if you can give them very precise directions. And when I say precise, I mean you have to start with the smallest step you can think of. Um, you can't tell a kid who's like two to get dressed. Well, sometimes you can't, but most two-year-olds, you can't just say, get dressed. You have to say, find your underwear. Where are they? Okay, where's the top? Let's put one leg in. But if you're really, really tired, that's a good thing. And it's good that you can kind of guide them through that process without having to actually get up. Um, similarly, um, you know, can you pick up the dolls and put them in this bin? And along with all of those things comes with setting things up so that your children can be independent because the more independent your children can be the easier it's going to be on you um and i think sometimes there co that comes with a certain amount of letting go i mean sometimes my kids don't put their laundry away exactly the way i would like them to do it but it's a way and i don't have the energy to chase after it and make sure it gets done and it's better that they put it away incorrectly than it stays in a basket for the next week and a half so, um, preschoolers absolutely love jobs and love routines. So any job that they can do regularly, like clearing the table after a meal or setting the table before a meal, or it's my job to pick up red Legos or put my boots where my boots go or any of those really small jobs. Um, they're also really good, both toddlers and preschoolers at pushing laundry baskets. And it's actually really good, especially in, I live in Canada in the winter. Um, when you can't get outside, especially if I can't get outside, it's great because I can put a laundry basket on the floor and say, hey, can you bring this down to mommy's room? And they can slide it along the floor. Um, so they got to do some work that involved kind of their gross motor muscles and I got my basket where I needed it to go without having to pick it up. Um, school agers um, will do jobs but need to be let to do them without feeling like you're going to come behind them and do it for them, which again comes into that whole 
letting them do it thing because if you're going to come behind them and redo it, what's the point in them doing it? Um, so you kind of have to let go of perfection, but again, the dishes got put away, maybe not in the right places, but they're away. Sure. Um, and teenagers can really be given jobs in areas of the household that they can be responsible for. So take your good days and teach them how to do those things. And when I'm teaching kids about jobs and things like that, I like to try to stick to um, let making sure that they know that I'm not teaching them this because I'm being mean or because I think that I shouldn't have to do them, but usually because A, it's something you're going to have to know how to do as an adult. I want to send functioning adults as best as possible out into the world. Adults who know how to look after themselves, especially because my eldest is a boy. I don't want to send a boy out who doesn't know how to do dishes and laundry and all that kind of important stuff that goes into looking after yourself as an adult. Um, Woohoo, I did it. So yeah, I do take the time to, to tell them not only that, you know, here's a job that I would like you to do, but here's a job that's important to know about because one day you will be an adult and you will need to know how to do that. And there are adults out there who don't know how to wash dishes or clean a bathroom or put their laundry away or whatever else. Um, and the other thing is to be sure to thank them. I know that my 12 year old probably has more responsibility than a lot of other 12 year olds. Um, some of that is because I've asked it, but a lot of it's because he's volunteered because he can see that I'm struggling and he's a good kid and he wants to help. So I can't always do the job for him, but I can always make sure to thank him and I can make sure he knows that it isn't actually his responsibility to do that. Um, and that I appreciate the help. Um, tip number five is kind of about feeding people. Feeding people is important. I mean, really, at the end of the day, if the kids are fed and they're clean and the, for the most, mostly clean and they're happy, you've succeeded. And having realistic expectations of what you can get done on a bad day is important. Um, so yeah, the, my tip number five is live the leftover life. Um, on a good day, if you're cooking, cook a big portion and then freeze it or stick it in the refrigerator or find a way to store it so that you can eat it on a bad day because on a bad day leftovers are your friend. Um, yeah. What are some other tips? This is a trickier thing to do with teenagers in the house now because they eat everything and there are never any leftovers. <laughs> um, it can also be tricky if you don't have a lot of freezer space, but um, there are a lot of tips out there on how to store food in the most space efficient ways. Um, my roommate has a really good trick where if you're going to put like say soup or something in a baggie, then you lay the baggie down and kind of squish it down so it lays flat and then you can kind of stack a whole bunch of them on top of each other. Um, I mean, there are a lot of resources out there now on things like batch cooking and those meal box things that you can have sent to your house. Um, so, but I mean, even if you don't have the freezer space to actually store prepared meals, you can always, you know, chop the vegetables and stick them in the fridge. Um, so I've chopped, you know, or, you know, tiny parts of, of, of a meal. So yeah, okay. I don't have room to store a full meal in my fridge, but I can store, the extra mashed potatoes I made today and I will do something with them tomorrow. So there's always different kinds of ideas. Um, if you have any ideas, put them in the comments. I would love to have comments. Um, yeah. Um, you can also back going back to that kind of snack idea. You can on those good days, take advantage of it and put some dry things into bed into portion note baggies so that again your preschooler knows they can have one baggie of crackers not the whole box and you know it keeps it from being spread all over the house um yeah those are my five tips for parenting well disabled maybe you have other ones that you'd like to share again stick them in the comments um like share subscribe please and thank you i 
would love to do more things like this. So let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.